I just wanted to leave you guys with some final thoughts um, before I go and before um, I kind of leave you to write your paper. Um, again, if you have any questions about who Circe's is throughout any of the source material or throughout the Circe's Mud Poems or throughout Circe's itself, feel free to contact me. I'm happy um, to speak with you guys about it and talk about this character whom I love very much. What I hope you took away from the book is that in the original version, Circe's is seen as this goddess and as this temptress and really as this person that Odysseus had to pass through and get by in order to complete his journey. And that was the way he told the story, right? Um, we know from other lectures that I've done on this that who's telling the story is of vital importance. But as seeing it from Circe's eyes, seeing it from different authors' eyes, allows us to take her in as a whole. And if I can give you one piece of advice as you move into these last stages of creating your um, paper, I would say always look for what is Circe's motivation. So what does she want in the Odyssey? What does she want in You Are Happy? What does she want in The Sea of Monsters? What does she want in Circe's overall? I think that by examining closely her motivation, you'll be able to understand her decision in the last five or so pages of Circe's by Madeline Miller. Um, so we've talked about how in the Circe's Med poem, there's really this kind of idea or an overwhelming metaphor of territorial invasion, right? Um, and it's presented all throughout the Med poems with quotes like, you land on the dry shore, or one day you simply appear in your stupid boat. Um, in the poem, Holding My Arms Down, Atwood takes the encounter between Circe's and Odysseus into an even more degrading light. Um, and the relationship becomes one that is sexually violent, perpetrated by man against woman. Now, we've seen a lot of different versions of Odysseus, and that would be a very interesting paper as well, how that character is reimagined. Um, obviously, for Telemachus, his father becomes this evil being cursed by war. For Circe's and Madeline Miller's version, you don't have this violence. It's almost as if Circe's plays the role of uh, like a test Penelope, right? She's setting the way for how he will react when he gets to see Penelope again. Um, and you are happy with Margaret Atwood. We definitely see that Odysseus is taking some liberties though, and that, that you know, he maybe isn't the hero that we should assume he is. And perhaps the biggest example of this is the poem, holding my arms down on page 55 in your PDF. Um, here are some of the things that it says about that. Holding my arms down, holding my head down by the hair, mouth gouging my face and neck, fingers groping into my flesh. Circe's archetype of the goddess undergoes a final and brutal treatment in what is the for me, one of the final and defining poems within this section. It's a prose poem. It's on page 61 of your text um, or your PDF, if you're looking at that. Uh, and the narrator introduces this figure of a mud woman. The mud woman, I would like you guys to realize right now, is Circe's alter ego right? Um, the mud woman does not have a life of her own. Her only task is to fill the sexual desires of two men who have constructed her. Her body begins at the neck, it ends at the knees and elbow, and each time the two men make love to her, they repair her, but in doing so, they make her breasts a little bigger and her hips a little wider. Out of metaphor, when the woman decides to relinquish her traditional power, her only other choice is to become a receptacle, sexual object, modeled in the image and likeness of men's desire. If Circe can't be a temptress of tradition, she has to become a passive object of desire and victim. And that's one of the searing 
remaining movements that we get from Margaret Atwood's poems. In both cases, the other is fixed as unchangeable, known, predictable. So what I thought I'd do here in the last moments is I thought I'd read this last poem to you on page um, 61, and it starts, This story was told to me. This story was told to me by another traveler just passing through. It took place in a foreign country, as everything does. When he was young, he and another boy constructed a woman out of mud. She began at the neck and ended at the knees and elbows. They stuck to the essentials. Every sunny day, they would row across to the island where she lived. In the afternoon, when the sun had warmed her and made love to her, sinking with when the sun warmed her and make love to her, sinking with ecstasy into her soft, moist belly. Her brown, wormy flesh where small weeds had already rooted. They would take turns. They were not jealous. She preferred them both. Afterwards, they would repair her, making her hips more spacious, enlarging her breast with her shining stone nipples. Her, his love for her was perfect. He could say anything to her. Into her, he spilled his entire life. She was swept away in a sudden flood. He said, no woman since has equaled her. Is this what you would like me to be? This mud woman. Is this what I would like to be? It would be so simple. Guys, I hope this gives you a little further understanding of the Circe's Mud Poems. And I hope to see that some of you guys are using these in your final paper due on May 11th. If you have any questions, please let me know. You guys have my number and my email address, and I'm happy to answer them at any time.